Hello everyone, welcome back to True Footy and Just The Tips. This has become my favorite piece of content each week and I was feeling pretty good. You know, I got seven out of nine last week. I think I got the Sydney over Collingwood tip wrong and I tipped Brisbane over Fremantle. Then I realized, you know, pretty much everyone did quite well last weekend, so I guess I'm not very special. But before we get into today's tips, I do want to shout out the newest member of this channel, Samantha Jane. Thank you so much for jumping on board. And as well, I need to acknowledge all of the winners of our True Footy competition. So if you're unaware, we've got a tipping competition for everyone. We've got a members only tipping competition and we've got a fantasy league and you can find all the links to that and the invite code in the description of this video. So let's read out some of the weekly winners. So in the members tipping competition, we had Graz, one of our newest members as well, who got eight with a margin of six. Not bad for a Fremantle supporter, Graz. And the round one winner for the general tipping competition is the Mighty Muffin dot dot dot. I don't know if there is a second part to that name, but the app on the phone cuts it off. Perfect nine and a margin of 10. That is outstanding, Mighty Muffin. And then the leader of the members competition is Graz once again. So that took him to top. He's got 11 with a margin of 23. And then the leader for the general competition is Shalve with 19 and 21. That is outstanding going. And I know what you're thinking. There's only been 12 games. How is somebody on 19? How am I on 14? I'm just noticing that for the first time. I, I actually have no explanation for that. There must be some sort of whack rule where some, we got double points. I, I can't see how that is possible. Someone let me know in the comments if you know what the hell is going on there. But either way, Shalve is the leader. And finally, the leader of our fantasy league is Jackson V with an impressive score of 2181. I got about 1999. I was fairly happy with that. And it's put me about right back in the middle of the fantasy competition. So like I said, join all those comps with the links below. All right, let's crack into round two's just the tips. Aided once again, by squiggle.com. So St. Kilda versus Collingwood. This is going to be a, a very interesting one. And I don't know if this is a good time or a bad time for the Saints to play Collingwood. Obviously, they're 0-2 and have looked pretty sloppy so far. And I do respect St. Kilda as a good side. So I think it'll be a good game. I can't work out if Collingwood are going to be jaded enough to potentially lose this game or if they're going to make a big statement. And I'm probably more inclined to think that Collingwood are not going to let themselves go 0-3. I'd probably obviously have Collingwood as a slightly better team anyway, you know, certainly at the start of the season, whilst also respecting St Kilda. And St Kilda obviously came up a bit short at GMHBA, which is a tough fixture. So I'm still kind of getting a read on the Saints too. I reckon this will be a thriller, but I think I'm going to tip the Pies. I think this game was close last year. I want to say it was like six points. It might have even been gathered around. So I'm going to say Collingwood by 10 points. And, uh, but that is a doozy. That could be game of the round. I'll lock that in. So Adelaide versus Geelong now. And when I think of these two sides play, I think of the 2021 uh, round one game where Adelaide shocked them. The Crows were a little bit sloppy last week, definitely. They were disappointing against the Suns. They left their run too late. And uh, particularly in the wet, I think Gold Coast were just certainly better in the midfield. Um, but they are a strong midfield side. Now, Geelong uh, coming off a good win against the Saints, relatively good win. I think Geelong will be a typically tough opponent. I'm not expecting them to be rolled over. That being said, Adelaide will want to make a statement. They're a better side than they showed last week, and they have a home ground advantage that makes them hard to tip again. So I'm going to tip the Crows at home here, but uh, definitely Geelong will probably give them a few nervous moments. I'll tip the Crows by four goals. Then we've got North and Fremantle. Again, this is, uh, this is not simple, okay? So we'll start with North. I thought they were pretty... You know, it was a pretty honorable loss against the Giants. Tough opponent in Sydney, showing some good signs. I think the Roos are up and about early in the season, and I think this is actually a bad time to play North Melbourne for Fremantle. That being said, Fremantle have just come off a very impressive victory against the Lions, um, where they, you know, completely dominated the clearance battle. Caleb Theron was unreal. They've got a few injured soldiers at the moment, Fremantle, but it was a very compelling win. Oh, and I don't want to talk them down, but I do feel like it would be very Fremantle to beat one of last year's grand finalists and then lose a game they should win. I, I, uh, You know what, to be honest, I think before I saw Fremantle play Brisbane, I might have tipped North in a roughie here, but I think I'm going to respect Fremantle here by tipping them. But I do think this could go either way, not because I don't think Fremantle's good, but I just think Fre uh, North will be plucky early in the season. And don't forget, North did beat them 12 months ago. So I'll say Fremantle by 13 points. Hawthorne versus Melbourne at the MCG. Hawthorne came up short against Essendon, didn't play poorly. It was actually a pretty good game of football, I thought. Obviously with a few fallen soldiers themselves and some recruits that have come in and impacted already. In particular, I thought uh, Ginevan was really good. D'Ambrosio had 30 touches. Chol was, you know, impactful as well. Melbourne... 
They were, you know, they kind of kept the Bulldogs at arm's bay, arm's distance, arm's bay. Is that, what am I saying? Yeah. They kept about a three goal buffer on the Bulldogs for most of that game and then sort of ran away late. And that, that kind of played out how you expect. So Melbourne are a tougher opponent than Essendon. I do think, I mean, Hawthorne aren't without their chances at all for a shock upset because they are that sort of team. But at the same time, I don't think Melbourne's given me too many reasons to doubt them. Obviously, they lost in round one to Sydney and then Sydney dismantled Collingwood. And so I think Melbourne should well and truly start as favourites. So I'm going to say Melbourne by 31 points. Now, this seems like a good opportunity to give you guys a message from Drewsy's Athlete Academy. If you're a footballer with an important season coming up, it's crucial that you have a well-balanced strength and recovery plan in place to help improve your performance. Lots of footballers are busy people and it becomes hard to juggle work and study with footy and family commitments. That means when you make time for the gym, you want to do the most effective exercises that translate directly to footy and make you the best player possible. As a qualified strength and conditioning coach who has worked with high-level footballers, Druzy works online one-on-one with you to make sure your gym training and recovery is on point. That way, all you have to focus on is your performance and your day-to-day life. Druzy gets results and all of his clients are stoked with the service, so there's no reason you can't be too. By clicking on the link in the description or in the pinned comment, Druzy will be in touch and you can get started for free. So this is a good time to stop following random gym programs that aren't focused on you as a footballer. If you're a footballer and think this is something that you could potentially benefit from, you can save 20% off of any Druzy strength and conditioning program by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Get in touch with Druzy's Athlete Academy and have a plan specifically made for you. Sydney versus Essendon at the SCG. Again, this this game has some potential because I feel like these two teams do have the propensity to give us really entertaining games, regardless of ladder position. I haven't looked it up, but I feel like that's a trend between them. And this is a horrible time to play Sydney where I think they are in some really good form. Obviously, too good for Melbourne in the first round and then dismantled Collingwood and Essendon, you know, with all due respect, are not quite as good as those teams. So I think this is a really tough ask. But it is conceivable that they get closer than those two teams because sometimes that's how football works. The Swans are looking red hot at the moment. They're a serious premiership contender. If you believe that Melbourne and Collingwood are going to be good sides this year, they've got some talent. Oh, I think this this will be tough. I thought Essen was pretty good last week, and particularly you know without Parish. But Sydney, Sydney don't really give me any reason to not think they will beat Essendon. But I'll, I'll say it's closer than people expect, purely because these teams match up at each other weird. So I'll say 23 points. I don't think it'll be a belting. Bulldogs versus Gold Coast. Now, this one again is rough. Uh, and that is not a dog pun, but that would have been very funny. Um, yeah, so in Mars Stadium, again, I feel like Gold Coast have beaten them here. And this could be, it could be the best version of Gold Coast we've ever seen. It is only early days, but they're 2-0 and with wins over Richmond and then subsequently Adelaide. And Adelaide, Adelaide are poor away from home. But at the same time, give them credit, uh, Gold Coast were well and truly the better side for about three and a half quarters, and then Adelaide almost steamrolled them. And the Bulldogs, you know, I don't think the first round result was terrible. Yes, the percentage is the second worst in the league at the moment, but they played Melbourne, and they, you know, they were in in it for about three quarters and then got put away. That being said, I, I really don't know who to tip in this game. This could seriously be an upset where Gold Coast get their third win in a row. I think I'm going to tip the Bulldogs... I think there's a lot of pressure on them at the moment. And I think this will be an arm wrestle. I think this will be a low-scoring arm wrestle, if I had to guess. I'm going to say the Bulldogs by five points, just to relieve a little bit of pressure on Beveridge. Richmond versus Port Adelaide at the MCG. If I'm not mistaken, Port Adelaide's only win at the MCG last year might have been against Richmond. I'm sure they beat them there. I can't remember if it was their only win at the MCG. Richmond, you know, respect. Like, I did talk them down this preseason a little bit. I was more worried about how vulnerable they'd look if they lost a few key players, that has happened. They've had some injuries and they've been really good, to be fair. I mean, obviously Gold Coast, you know, well and truly beat them, particularly in that first half. But I think the spirit that they showed against Carlton to almost clinch the game against the more fancied opponent who could potentially be a premiership contender this year with the injuries to Prestia and then some younger guys entirely young and Gibkus certainly undermanned. I've been impressed. That being said, Port Adelaide have also given me no reason to doubt them at the moment. Um, they played West Coast, hard to get a barometer on that game. I thought West Coast, you know, put in a pretty good fight for three quarters. The last quarter, I think Port Adelaide kicked five goals, nine. The damn wall sort of broke, but at the same time, it, while West Coast, I thought, put in an okay fight up, there was a huge gulf between the two sides, and Port Adelaide still looked like a good side, and Connor Rosie and Butters were probably the best two power players on the field. So they're going to get back in Port Adelaide, I think. It'll be tough, though. Like, if Richmond bring that sort of game against Carlton to this game, 
could be very dicey. Could be very dicey, particularly as Port Adelaide, you know, are not well. They're not an MCG side, and logically, they do have the capacity to not play well there, as we saw against Collingwood last year. So I'm I'm going to tip the power with my head, but I my gut is kind of saying this might not be right. But I'll say Port Adelaide by 15 points. I'll call it a good game. Oh dear, West Coast against GWS. So I tip GWS for the premiership. Um, so this game might not go so well. Uh, that being said, the last time these two sides met, West Coast actually won, but the two sides went in divergent directions since then. West Coast, um, well, their injuries <laughs> took a hold of them. I think they had seven to nine injuries the following week and became the basket case of the competition. GWS probably, you know, started till about round 15 and then became one of the best teams in the competition. So long story short, very different GWS, even if West Coast have a chance of at least being as good as they were in round two last year, the opponent has gotten a lot better. So obviously this one you don't really need to think too much about. Home crowds getting around the boys. Could they do enough to avoid a shellacking? I don't know. Let's call it 50 points. I think that's fair. So there you have it, guys. That is my round two predictions. Uh, Usually I like to analyze the latter. Obviously there's a buy this week. I think it's Brisbane and Carlton don't play in round two, which means that slowly over the next few weeks, everyone will have played the same amount of games. Um, But I'm hoping to envisage a world where West Coast are not bottom of the ladder somehow uh, at the end of this round so yeah the teams having played different amounts of games is annoying but anyway let me know in the comments guys who you're tipping also want to hear game of the round and upset of the round so game of the round probably for me is secure to collingwood i think that'll be a ripper but there will be a few good games this round upset of the round is gold coast and bulldogs probably too even to be considered an upset it probably is so if that's the case then i'd probably say north to potentially clinch it against freeman or again i just think that was a danger game for Fremantle, even though they are the better side. But there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.